John Perry here. You are watching the Stated Casually YouTube channel. Years ago, I heard that about 10% of humans are, quote, immune to poison oak. And a few weeks ago, I was out in the woods and I found some poison oak and I wondered, could it be that I am among that lucky 10%? I've been running around in the woods ever since I was a little kid, and not once have I had an outbreak. So, maybe, right? I then proceeded to make a horrible decision, and I filmed myself doing it. So here is the actual footage of me making that horrible decision. Alright, so here we have some poison oak. Leaves of three, let it be. And I... So far as I know, I am not allergic to it, and I'm actually trying to do a test. I actually do want to know whether or not I'm allergic to it. So I'm going to apply some to my shin. I don't want to get it on my hands, so I'm going to use these pine cones to pluck a leaf. Ah. And I think my shin is a good testing spot. I'm not sure which side is toxic, so I'm going to do both sides. And now I'm gonna monitor how I react over the next whatever time. Some people just aren't allergic to it. I've never gotten a poison oak infection in my life, even though I've been walking around the woods a lot, so I suspect that I'm not, but it'd be good to know for sure whether or not I am, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> now, before I show you what happened to my leg, let's stop for a moment and talk about why what I did was so stupid. And by the way, share this video with your friends so as many people as possible can learn from my mistake. I thought at the time that poison oak rashes were caused by toxins. And if they were simply caused by toxins, what I did really wasn't all that dumb. I applied the stuff to my shin, a part of my body that I didn't really mind getting a rash on, and poison oak rashes usually only last one to two weeks, so it wasn't really that big of a deal, right? Well, unfortunately, Poison oak rashes are not caused by toxins. They are caused by allergens. And the difference between a toxin and an allergen might seem trivial, but it's not. And I wish that three weeks ago, when I had rubbed this stuff on my leg, I wish that I knew the difference between toxins and allergens. A toxin is any molecule that directly interrupts your body's normal chemistry. So, the foxglove plant, for example produces a set of toxins called cardiac glycosides. If swallowed, these toxins chemically disrupt little salt pumps in your muscle cells. Salt's not exactly the right word. They interrupt the activity of sodium-potassium ion pumps. This causes those muscle cells to misfire. They don't flex when they're supposed to. As a result, you end up having a super bad day. Just a few nibbles of foxglove, and your stomach muscles will misbehave so much that you will begin to vomit, and if you swallow too much, your heart will fail. That's why they call it cardiac glycosides. Cardiac as in heart attack or cardiac arrest. Now, there is a bit of a paradox here. We actually use this plant as medicine for people with heart disease. That's because what's toxic at a large dose can be beneficial at a small dose. But that's for another video some other time. Though these toxins are harmful to most mammals, and in fact they evolved to be a defense against grazers, if an animal population is large enough, certain individuals in that population are likely to exist that are completely resistant to these toxins. That's because if a population is large enough, someone in that population is almost guaranteed to have a mutation in the gene that codes for sodium-potassium ion pumps that just happens to change the shape of those pumps enough that the toxin cannot do its job. If you happen to be that lucky mutant, you are invincible to the toxin. A scientist wouldn't say that you are immune to it, instead they'd say that you are resistant to that toxin. And I thought mistakenly that this is how poison oak worked as well, and that's why 10% of the population was, quote, immune to it or resistant to it. I was wrong. Interesting side note, this here is an extremely toxic newt living in the Oregon coastal range. I found him the same day that I <laughs> rubbed the poison oak on my leg. This animal is far more toxic than the famous poison dart frog. One newt from the population that lives in this forest, and other populations are not nearly as toxic, but one newt from this forest is toxic enough to kill about 
ten adult humans if, of course, each of them were to swallow a piece. Alongside them here in the Oregon coastal range is a population of garter snakes that, due to a mutation that is specific to this population of snakes, makes them extremely resistant to that toxin. So, as far as we can tell, at some time in the past, a random mutation arose in a single snake, giving it resistance to the toxin, and because it was resistant, it automatically had a whole new food source available to it, something that no other animals in the forest could eat. And because of that, it was a really successful snake, had lots of babies, passed that trade on to its offspring, and now we have this weird population of garter snakes living in the coastal range that are immune to the extremely toxic newts also living in the coastal range. It's a really cool evolution in action story. You can read about it. I've got a, a link to a paper in the video description there. Anyway, aside the fact that you can actually be resistant to a toxin because of a mutation, you can also develop an immunity to certain toxins. Now, I don't recommend trying this at home unless supervised by a professional, but if you expose yourself to low doses of certain toxins, not all toxins, but certain toxins, if you expose yourself to low doses multiple times and then gradually increase that dose, your immune system can learn to recognize and attack that toxin before the toxin can hurt your body. Most famously, people will do this with snake venom and then become immune to certain species of snakes' bites. So that is how toxins work. In contrast, an allergen is a molecule that triggers your immune system to misfire and attack your own body. So the allergen itself is harmless. It doesn't actually disrupt the chemistry of your body. It's the immune system's crazy response to that allergen that causes you problems. Urushiol is an oil found in poison oak and poison ivy that most people are not allergic to at first, but will develop an allergy to the oil if exposed to it multiple times or if exposed to it in an unusually high dose all at once. So let's say, for example, that you took some poison oak and ground it into your shin, for example. That would probably do it. The oil absorbs into your skin and then it sticks to the outside of your skin cells. And the way that it does that changes the way those cells, quote, look to your immune system. Your immune system then confuses those cells as either outside invaders or as cancer cells, and then it kills them. This is how my shin reacted, and this, this photo was taken two weeks after rubbing the poison oak on my shin. The rash isn't horrible, but now that my immune system has been trained to recognize poison oak as an enemy, next time I'm exposed, the reaction is likely to be much quicker and much more severe. Now, I went online and I looked at the world's worst poison oak rashes, and they're pretty horrible. I'm going to spare you. Instead of showing you those, I'm going to show you these pretty photos of Oregon. <laughs> There's blood, there's pus, all because the immune system is attacking these people's own skin. Now, here's the really sad part. Once you develop a sensitivity to poison oak, you will often maintain that sensitivity for the rest of your life. Well, unless you get AIDS or something and your immune system starts to fail. But, <laughs> but then you'll have different problems to worry about. There are people online selling homeopathic remedies that they claim will desensitize you to poison oak, and it's all BS. Don't, don't buy that stuff. There was an injection a while ago that was shown to work sometimes, but the side effects were so bad that people don't recommend using it anymore. Pretty much once you become sensitized to poison oak, you're basically screwed. Some people will spontaneously become desensitized to it again, but it's pretty rare and we don't really understand how to do that medically on purpose. So, yeah. Because I didn't know the difference between a toxin and an allergen, I will now have to deal with poison oak sensitivity for the rest of my life. So, don't do what I did. <laughs> also, make sure to share this video with your friends so they don't do it as well. So long for now. Stay curious. One more thing before I go, if you want to see more videos about evolution and sciencey stuff, subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's fun.